Good morning, North Beach kids. How are you? Happy Monday. Teacher Tony here, and I'm here to tell you guys another story of legends, folklore, myths, and campfire stories. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys have been enjoying the legends, myths, campfire, and folklore stories so far. Let's see, we've done Bigfoot, mermaids, and what was the other one? It was so much fun. Oh, dragons. Oh, yeah, that one was cool. Legends, folklore, myths, and campfire stories. Like all these stories start way back in the caveman day when they would sit around the fire and tell each other tall tales about things that might be true, but over time they become a little bit more fantastic a little bit more, maybe unreal. But the story grew, and the story grew, and they became legends. And teachers would tell stories about folklore and fantasy stories. Mommy and daddies would read you on bed. Really awesome stories, legends and myths, and of course, the campfire, where the coolest and the best of stories are told. Now, today I'm gonna tell you a fairy tale. And our next topic, our next magical being, actually has that word in it. But fairy tales are stories involving fantastic forces originating in folklore, mythology, and legends. They feature fantasy beings such as dragons, doors, and talking animals. And fairies. Oh yeah, fairies, you guys. Today I'm going to talk to you about the legend of fairies, pixies, fae, and the forest people. Are our fairies for reals or make-believe? You guys be the judges. So look, most of these stories, like I told you, they started around a campfire. All the American Indians, the cavemen, and places all over the world. And the stories started becoming kind of similar this particular story. Well, people would say, well, more distinctly, settlers and, and hunters and trappers and people that walk in the forest, they would say they would walk in, into the forest and it'd be very quick, very peaceful, very quiet. And as it's getting dark, they would see different things moving. And they would see and hear a lot of activity but it, when they got closer there was nothing there just trees and forest and they told these fantastic stories and it wasn't just here in America it was in Europe and Asia and in India and Africa and all around and they would talk about the little people of the forest and at nighttime they would see orbs of light and we hear giggling <laughs> and they would hear multiple people dancing and singing and enjoying themselves. But as they got closer, they didn't see anything. What was this mystery? And that is how the legend of the fairies began. Stories passed down from generation to generation of something in the deep, dark forest. But nobody, nobody ever seen one. That is, except for children. Children had a secret. And when the adults would sit around the campfire and tell stories, the children would laugh. They had to cover their mouths so the adults didn't see them laughing because they had a secret. They had a secret only kids knew. Adults did not know. I don't know. Maybe some of you North Beach kids know this secret. Oh, that you're saying, Teacher Tony, that, that, uh, 
That is not a kid on the right there. That's a dog. Why is that dog laughing? Well, you're going to have to wait and find out why that dog is laughing. But for now, the children, they had a secret. And they did not tell the adults this secret. Do you guys want to know what the secret is? I'm sure some of you already know the secret. But some of us that don't know, let's find out. For years, for years and years and years, as the children would walk through the forest, they would see little, little homes. Homes in the trees, homes in, on lily pads, homes on mushrooms, mostly in the trees, and they're very special. But still, they did not tell their secret because they made a promise with all the fairies in the land that they would never, ever, ever tell adults that there was such a thing as fairies. Yeah, only children can see fairies. And they, like I said, they made a pact with all the fairies in the kingdom that they would keep their secrets. And so the children, when they would hear those stories about the hunters or the, the woodcutters walking through the forest and seeing lights and hearing music and noise and laughter, but could never find anything. The whole time, the children knew that fairies did exist. And they were beautiful. Now, fairies are tiny, tiny, tiny creatures. They're very, very special, and they're only in the deep, deep woods. That is probably because they really want to be left alone, just like Bigfoot, just like the people, just like the Loch Ness Monster. So fairies are also known as the fae, pixies, wood nymphs, and the forest people. And they were beings of light and goodness, but they were also tricksters. And most of the tricks were on adults, which is kind of funny. They were known to tie adults' shoelaces together. So when that adult tried to go walk, <laughs> plop, he'd fall. And then that adult would hear, <laughs> and see little orbs of light fly off. And again, the children could not share that there were fairies. Not only were there fairies, there were many fairies, lots of fairies, hundreds of fairies, and there were villages of fairies and kingdoms of fairies. You know what? Some stories, some legends even say there was a king and queen fairy, and all the animals of the forest loved and respected the king and queen and all the fairies. And that's because the fairies loved animals. They can talk to animals. And they treated animals with respect and love and took care of the animals. One of the legends goes that if an animal got stuck in a trap or was hurt or something happened to them, they were sick, the fairies would fly down and spread magic pixie dust on the animals and heal them. And that's why they loved them and respected them. Another story goes, in the deep, deep woods, if a hunter came in looking to hunt some of the animals, the fairy queen would send out all the fairies all along the kingdom, around the kingdom, to warn all the animals, run, friends, run. There are hunters about. And they would save the animals. There are also some quite famous uh, fairies, you know, like uh, Tinkerbell. That's that. That's the girl in front. And you see there, they usually are very, very small, about three inches. That's about, probably about the size of your, your pointer finger. And usually they had translucent wings. That means you can see through them. And they always had bells. That way you can hear them. A lot of times they had them on their feet. And they were shiny. And like I said, at nighttime, only adults can see orbs of light. They never, ever seen a real live fairy. And of course, there's Disney, who had the, um, the fairy godmother. 
and the three fairy godmothers from from Cinderella and uh, other cool Disney stories. And of course, the Tooth Fairy. We all know about her. Some of our cheetahs know them quite well, huh? Maddie, Jack, some of you guys, Ramona, have had visits by the Tooth Fairy. Not once, not twice, a, about three or four times for some of you big old cheetahs. Don't worry, honey badger. You guys are next. Oh, <laughs> you remember? And I said, not only did kids share that secret and laugh when the adults were telling stories about seeing orbs or, see, or hearing music or hearing laughter. Dogs. Dogs can always hear, see, and they knew all about the fairies. And that's why when they were, have, they were at the meetings or the campfires with the children, they also laughed. And the fairies are very, very special beings. Sometimes people, the legend says sometimes they, they were little angels sent from the sky. Other people say they were people that turned into little people that lived in a deep, dark forest. But one thing is for sure, they're always kind, they're always sweet, and they always, always loved animals. Now, it's still interesting to find out why adults can't see fairies. As a matter of fact, how legend and folklore works, adults don't really even remember what the fairies really looked like when they were children. So by the time they became adults, they couldn't see them anymore. So they had to say, well, that was just my imagination when I was a kid. They really don't exist. But we kids, right, North Beach kids? <laughs> We know out there in the forest, having fun, singing their songs, are the fairies, the fae, the pixies, the wood nymphs, and the forest people, and the sugar plum princesses, all having fun in the deep, dark forest, and only us kids can see them. That's our legend, folklore, myths, and campfire stories. Shh, you guys, remember, just us kids can see fairies. So don't tell mom and dad. They might get jealous. Um, it's okay, you guys. You can tell mom and dad. They might not believe you, but you guys know, I know, us kids know, that fairies are for reals. So until next time, North Beach kids, I hope you enjoyed this rendition of legends, folklore, myths, and campfire stories. Have a good day.